in the last class already we have discussed on the imaginary number which is the main component of the complex numbers and also we have discussed what is the meaning of complex number is practically another one topic was there that is we can also define the complex number in terms of ordered pair once again we are starting from that particular portion that is any complex number any complex number suppose we have z is equal to x plus i y now it can be defined by the ordered pair which one ordered pair now that one is the x comma y of the real number x and y x and y what is happening here uh, suppose we have a plus i b that is a complex number now that cannot be equal to b plus a i because a and b both are different in the case of complex number the first component always the first component of the ordered pair is the real part and the second component of the ordered pair is practically the coefficient of the imaginary number i the coefficient of i suppose here in the first case that one is the first part that obviously the real and that second part that b is also a real number but that is also a coefficient of i in the second one in that case b is the real part but a is the real also but that is the coefficient of i so obviously in that case we can write it as a comma b but in that case that can be written as b comma a so if only so we can say only if a is equal to b then we can say a plus ib is equal to b plus i a otherwise never a plus ib is equal to b plus a i so the ordered means the real part number must be at the first time then the comma then the second part which is also a real and which is the coefficient of i and based on that ordered pair we can also have the geometrical representation of the complex number okay we would, we should proceed another one thing we are writing here suppose for some example like uh, already that has been suppose we have 7 comma 8 in the ordered pair so it can be written in the form of complex number that is 7 plus i 8 same as suppose if we have uh, minus 11 comma minus 5 then that can be written as minus 11 minus i 5 or 5 i nothing then suppose we have uh, 8 plus i 3 so it can be written as in the ordered pair 8 comma 3 or suppose we have minus 8 plus i 3 so it can be uh, written in the form of ordered pair minus 8 comma plus 3 or a simple 3 so that is the concept of the ordered pair according to the definition of complex number now based on that ordered pair 
definition of complex number, we can geometrically represent the complex number also. And that is called the Argan diagram. That means we are writing here, that is the geometrical representation of complex numbers which one is called the argand plane or argand diagram that is the important term once again what is happening when we are in the analytical geometry suppose in any analytical geometry case we use practically the cartesian coordinate system we know cartesian coordinate system means in 2d that is xy or in 3d that is xyz like that so we use the cartesian coordinate system and that is the cartesian coordinate is also one one correspondence or the relation between the set of ordered pairs and which ordered pairs suppose a comma b where that a b all belongs to real number into real number that means suppose we have a coordinate system like that and we simply drawing one x x dash y y dash although that should be 90 degree suppose that point x comma y so here we are writing starting from the origin o so that position is giving us the value of x and that position giving us the value of y. So that's why the x, y position is here. According to that one to one correspondence between the a, b or x, y, whatever we are writing here. Okay. So what is happening in the case of complex number? Now the complex number can also be represented by the ordered pair in the same form. And each point in the plane can be viewed as the graph of the complex number. Okay, so suppose we are drawing one. Suppose we have a complex number that is A plus IB. Now, that one is our coordinate system. Suppose that is x, that is y. That is our origin. So, odd a plus ib, that complex number can be written in the form of a comma b, that is the ordered pair. So, from O, we are proceeding, suppose that one is our positional A. And suppose that one is our positional B, that point. So, the A, B ordered pair should be here. But in which format we may write it as we are writing it not in the real format or the Cartesian coordinate system, we can write that A plus I, B here as only the complex number that is a plus i b that means that point particularly representing the complex number a plus i b in the same way in the same way as in the case of analytical geometry we are representing or we are calling the total system as the cartesian coordinate system but in that case we are writing it as the imaginary axis or 
imaginary x axis imaginary y axis although the total conception is the same but in that case the point is not the ordered pair ab in that format we are writing we are writing that point as the complex number itself so let's check with some more example with the argand diagram or argand value suppose at that moment i am drawing the imaginary axis here okay from what is happening that is our suppose y axis and the tab is doing some wrong thing that is x that is x dash that is y that is y dash that is our origin type so in the first point as we have said the a plus ib can be the point and each and every small square has been taken as an one unit so suppose the point or the for the complex number i am here that is minus 1 plus 2 i suppose for minus 1 plus 2 i so minus 1 means the point must be on the left hand side of the x axis that means on the negative side of x axis that is x dash so that is our minus 1 point and for 2 that is plus 2 so that should be here so practically this that point is representing minus 1 plus 2 i next one suppose we have 2 comma minus 4 that means 2 minus 4 i so 2 minus 4 i that means 1 2 that is the 2 point and minus 4 i so that means minus 4 so that should be here so that one is representing 2 minus 4 i that particular complex number another one suppose very simply uh, we are writing minus 3i that is the complex number so what should be the real part real part is here that is 0 so 0 means x is 0 so we have x is 0 in that particular on y axis and minus 3i so that means minus 1 Minus two, minus three. So that should be the complex number which is representing minus three i. So in that case, we are drawing in that way. Moreover, moreover, suppose minus four plus three i, minus four plus three i. So minus four means minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and 3i 1 2 3 so that is the point which is representing minus 4 plus 3i again suppose we are representing 3 minus 2i 3 minus 2i so that means 1 2 3 1 2 minus so minus 2 is here so that is representing 3 minus 2i so in that way we can represent the complex number in the imaginary axis which is called the argand diagram or argand plane so those are called the imaginary axis but that is resemble the coordinate cartesian coordinate system but in that case we are representing the point as only complex number not the ordered pair but we are using the concept of ordered pair so according to definition which one we can say the argand plane 
so we can say a plane on which on which uh, complex numbers are thus represented is often called the complex plane it is also called the argand plane and why it is named as also argand plane that is according to the french mathematician whose name was jean robert argand jean robert argand and uh, maybe in 17 68 to 1822 who systematically used that and based on his name the plane also named as the argand plane also it is called as the gauss plane g a u s s or g a u double s i a n gaussian plane sometimes and that is also according to the german mathematician who has also used that the same concept of the plane that is german mathematician that is karl frederick gauss and that is also from 1777 to 1855 so that means you can think how old the argand plane or the gaussian plane or the complex plane or the concept of complex number is already in the previous class we have discussed that the complex number concept or the imaginary number concept has been described 400 years ago so the complex number is always a very important term in mathematics once again i am transforming the complete background into graph so it would be better for you later okay so the a plus ib or any type of complex number notation has two features both addition and multiplication are easy in this notation suppose we have two uh, or more than two complex numbers are there okay so suppose we have a plus ib is the first one and another one suppose c plus id so if we want to add it that means we must add the a and c at first then the imaginary part on the others that means that should be written as a plus c plus ib plus id where we can take common the i as so we have a plus c plus i of b plus d that means suppose we have one complex number 5 plus 7i and another one suppose 3 plus 2i so it can be written as after addition the real parts 5 and 3 and the imaginary parts 7 and 2i so that must be 8 plus 9i after the result okay that is a simple 
arithmetical operation or the addition of two complex numbers and that can also be represented in the graph or the geometrical representation suppose the very first one we are defining one another four numbers or three complex numbers suppose the very first one we are writing that is 3 minus 5i that is not a problem 3 minus 5i that means the real part 1 2 3 that is the three positions and minus 5i that means minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 so that is representing 3 minus 5i no problem second one is very interesting that means 0 plus 0i 0 plus 0i so which should be that here the real part is 0 the imaginary part is also containing the coefficient as 0 so we know the ordered pair is here 0 comma 0 so that means that point is originally representing in the real number system as the origin that is also representing our complex number that is 0 plus 0 i okay next one suppose another one that is simply given as uh, suppose minus i or suppose plus i at first plus i so when that is plus i that means 0 plus i so its coefficient is 1 so that means 0 means the y axis so the imaginary y axis would be its position on the imaginary y axis and the coefficient is 1 so thus it is representing that particular point as plus i if we want to proceed with the minus i here that should be our minus i because that is 0 minus i so in that way we can proceed with the complex number representation in geometrical plane now another question can be there can two different points in complex plane represent the same complex number once again can two different points in the complex plane represent the same complex number no never because we have a plus i b is never equal to b plus i a already said why only the case when a is equal to b we can say both are same so when we have representation of a plus i b as a comma b then that can be represented as b comma a so always the different complex number are always different points on the argand plane or the gauss plane or the gaussian plane or the complex plane okay and that is only possible if we have suppose we have a plus i b has been given c plus i d and that is the equality of complex number also here we can say a is equal to c and b is equal to d then the same point representing the a plus i d and also the c plus i d next one is called the conjugate of a complex number conjugate of a complex number suppose we have a complex number z is equal to x plus i y okay then its conjugate is defined that means conjugate of z is defined 
as x minus i y. Look at the value that was x plus z y. Here that has been written x minus i y. Okay, sorry. So how we can write it in the form of z? That is z bar. Z bar is called the conjugate of any complex number. Same as if we have x minus i y as z. So its conjugate. So conjugate means that is vice versa. Its conjugate z bar is equal to x plus i y. That means always the sign is changing in that way. Okay, so if we write it in the form of ordered pair, so it is x comma y. So its conjugate is now ordered pair x minus y. Same as if it has x minus y, then its ordered pair is x comma y. Okay, let's check some problem with that. So it would be better. If we have z, we have a complex number, suppose z. Z is a complex number. So conjugate of the conjugate is the complex number itself. That means at first we are finding its conjugate. Then once again, we are finding its conjugate. It is going to be the complex number itself. That is same as like the reflection. Okay, so suppose we have, uh, we are writing here, z is equal to x plus i y. Then we have z bar is equal to x minus i y. Now, once again, we are finding its conjugate. So conjugate of z bar, that means it is also giving us the x plus i y. Now, x plus i y itself is the z. So we can say z bar of bar here is equal to the complex number z itself. Okay, you can also write that one in that way. That would be better for you. That means we are writing the complete bar on the complex number expansion also. Another one question is there. That is the square of the conjugate of the complex number is equal to the conjugate of the square of the complex numbers. Okay, that means what we want to say here, that is at first, find out the conjugate of the complex number. Then we are proceeding with its square. Okay, that means at first find out the conjugate of the complex number, then find out its square. That is also equal to at first, find out the square of the complex number, then find its conjugate. Both are equal. So let's check, is that really equal or not? Suppose we have a complex number z. That one is equal to x plus i, y. 
then we have its conjugate z plus uh, sorry z bar is equal to x minus i y so we are first finding the square of the conjugate so that means it one x minus i y whole square that one as like a minus b whole square a minus b whole square we are using it here x square minus 2 a that means x into b that is i into y plus i y whole square that means b square so that one is becoming x square that one minus 2 i x y and i square i y its square means i square y square that means minus y square so that one is becoming minus y square so we can write it that one is the real part that one is also the real part so x square minus y square and the imaginary part is the that portion so i of 2x y so that one is the becoming the left hand side that is the square of the conjugate of the complex number so next one we are we have to find out the conjugate of the square of the complex number so first find another one that is z square so z square means x plus i y our complex number was x plus i y it's square so once again a plus b whole square x square plus 2 x a that means i y that means b plus i y whole square which one is becoming x square plus i 2 x y minus y square the same that means x square minus y square plus i 2 x y now look at the things that is our real part in that case that is our imaginary part and that one is the minus case okay so if we have z square its conjugate which one real part that one so we are writing x square minus y square we are writing the imaginary part also i2 xy but that one was also plus so it one must be minus for its conjugate so we can say simply from that position that z bar whole square is equal to z square and its conjugate also giving us the same result next part that is called the modulus or absolute value of a complex number modulus or absolute values of a complex number okay suppose we have z is equal to a complex number suppose a plus i b then we can write its modulus or the absolute value anyone we can say that is according to the notation that is modulus of z is equal to that one is also we can write modulus of a plus i b or very simply square root of a square plus b square suppose we have 2 minus 3i that is our z so obviously the modulus of z that means modulus of 2 minus 3i 
that means we can write it as 2 it square a square so 2 square plus which one is our i coefficient of i if we write it in that format that means minus 3 so that is 2 square plus minus 3 square or simply it can be written as 4 plus 9 or square root of 13. So that means modulus means we have square root of a square plus b square. Suppose another one we are writing here. We have modulus of 5 plus 12 i. So here the modulus means 5 square plus 12 square, no problem. That means 25 plus 144 or square root of 169. Okay, I am not writing plus minus 13 or something, right? But that is simply square root of 169. Another one, suppose minus 5 plus 12 i, it's modulus. So here, that one must be the same because minus 5 whole square plus 12 square. That means square root of 25 plus 144, that is the same as 169. So what is the meaning of modulus or absolute value is? Practically, it is just the distance. That means here I am doing the diagram like suppose that is our imaginary axis y suppose that is our real number or imaginary x okay that is practically our real that is practically our imaginary always we have that is x plus i y that is our 0 comma 0 that is the point where we are writing it as a plus ib suppose okay so here we are writing in that way that means suppose that is our a minus ib that is a minus b a minus b that's why it has been that is minus b that is x a so that is a minus b that means that point is a minus i b okay so what is the thing is here that means this this one can be written as square root of a square plus b square according to the right angle triangle same thing is here so what is the meaning the modulus of a plus ib is just the distance from the origin to the point a minus ib let us create another one that is suppose here a plus ib so the right angle triangle is here that one is already we have a that one is already we have a that one is already b but that is minus b but that is b but the distance is always a square plus b square that's why both have the same modulus a plus ib and a minus ib if we look at the minus 5 plus 12 i here which has the same modulus 5 plus 12 i which has the same modulus in the same way the modulus or the absolute value of any complex number is written in that way or described in that way another one's problem that is based on the conjugate Suppose the question is like that. Find the 
real numbers x and y if given x minus i y into 3 plus 5 i is the conjugate of minus 6 minus 4 i once again not a single complex number has been written in that way here the two complex numbers in the multiplied format has been given so that means we have to perform the multiplication at first but is the conjugate of minus 6 minus 24 i so what is the conjugate of that minus 6 minus 24 i the conjugate must be minus 6 plus 24 i so simply we can write it x minus i y into 3 plus 5 i is equal to the conjugate of that one that means minus 6 plus 24 i okay then we should proceed with the multiplication let x at first multiply x with the 3 and 5y so that is 3x plus 5 into x into i then minus i y with the 3 and 5y so minus i 3y minus i y into 5 into i that's why i square is equal to minus 6 plus 24 i so that means look at that part that i square means minus 1 so already it is becoming plus so we can write that one is the real part that one is also the real part 3x plus 5y then that one is the imaginary part that one is the imaginary part and we are taking the i as common so 5x minus 3y is equal to minus 6 plus 24i so from here look at the comparison that is the real part that is the real part that one is the coefficient of the imaginary part that is the coefficient of the imaginary part so we can write from here that is 3x plus 5y is equal to minus 6 and 5x minus 3y is equal to 24 now we can solve this to solve this at first we are multiplying the one with five so that is 15x that means into five 15x plus 25y is equal to minus 30 and that one with three so 15x minus nine and 60 72 so after subtraction it gives 25 34 sorry that must be y 34y is equal to minus um, 102 so which one gives us y is equal to minus 102 divided by 34 or minus 3 so y is equal to minus 3 and from here we can solve anything that is 5x into minus 3 into minus 3 is equal to 24 or 5x 5x that one is minus na? minus 9 is equal to 24 or Oh, sorry that is 
minus plus 24. So what is going on here? Five x minus three into minus three. That means, sorry, that is three into minus three. Now minus plus nine, right? So five x is equal to twenty four minus nine. That means fifteen. So x is, is equal to three. Y is equal to minus three. What is happening here? Uh, what was happening here? We have taken the minus both times. That's why that was a problem. Minus of three into minus three, that means y. That's all. Okay, so x is equal to three, y is equal to minus three. So in that way, we can also solve the problem. That means we can write that one as three minus of minus three i into three plus five i is the conjugate of that particular number so simply multiplication means nothing we can multiply in that way okay and finally the fourth lines that is the algebra of complex numbers algebra of complex numbers already one has been defined that is the first one the sum or the addition of z1 and z2 that is the summation suppose we have z1 is equal to x1 plus i y1 z2 is equal to x2 plus i y2 so simply z1 plus z2 that means x1 plus x2 plus i into y1 plus y2 Suppose we have uh, already defined three plus five i plus five plus three i. That is three plus five plus i into five plus three. In that way, we can write it. Okay. Next one minus z or z one is defined by simple multiplication by simple multiplication with minus one like z is equal to or z1 is equal to a1 plus ib1 so minus z1 that means we have minus of a1 plus i into minus of b1 or minus a1 minus i uh, sorry i b1 i b1 simply we can write it another way here we have the ordered pair a b in that case we have the ordered pair minus a1 minus b1 so it would be very helpful third one is the subtraction as usual z1 minus z2 that is also we can write a1 plus ib1 subtraction a2 plus ib2 so that means same one a1 minus a2 now plus i b1 minus b2 in that way any number when multiplied with any real number when multiplied with the complex number suppose m is a positive integer so if we have m into j1 that means we can write it as m into a plus ib or we have m into uh, suppose that one a1 b1 then m of a1 plus i of m of b1 already we have done like that suppose 5 into 3 plus 2i so that is becoming 5 into 3 
plus i into 5 into 2 like that okay another one thing if we proceed with the division so that means z1 by m so that is also the same thing a plus ib divided by m that means a by m plus i b by m suppose we have 7 plus i3 divided by 5 so it can be written as 7 by 5 plus i into 3 by 5 okay and finally the multiplication already we have proceed that means we can multiply the two or more complex number in the normal way whatever we have find here okay and just the last one which is called the reciprocal of complex number that means if j is equal to x plus i y then reciprocal means 1 by j that means 1 by x plus i y which can be written x plus i y so we have taken another one that is x minus i y in the numerator and also in the denominator why because that one is becoming a plus b into a minus b so x square minus of i y square then x minus i y or it can be written as x square plus y square divided by x minus sorry x minus i y divided by x square plus y square or simply 1 by x square plus y square into x or x by minus i into y by x square plus y square that is simply the reciprocal of any complex number suppose z is equal to 5 plus 3 i given so 1 by z that means we can write it as x square plus y square divided by 5 minus 3 y that means 5 square plus 3 square or 5 by 5 square plus 3 square minus 3 by 5 square plus 3 square divided into i or you can write that is 25 plus 9 that means 34 so you can say 5 by 34 minus 3 by 34i that is the reciprocal of the z or simply you can say z is equal to z of conjugate divided by its square okay absolute square simply no problem